Hey guys and welcome back, my name is James and in this video I'll be showing you how to build this little bifold wallet with just two pieces of leather. As always you can pick up the pattern for this in the description below, the link is down there and it's a great little beginner's guide or build for someone who wants to start off making something easy uh, or someone who is looking for something really light and slim that can contain a few cards, banknotes as well as metro tickets and that can be easily slipped into a pocket. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video and enjoy the build. The first thing you want to do is make sure you print out your template and get your printer to set at 100% scale, if not you'll be slightly off. This is very precise, or at least for my version it is, you can surely adapt it if you want later, but to start off I would definitely recommend using this specific template at 100% scale on your printer. I'm using vegetable tanned leather here, which is 1.2 millimeters thick, and dyeing it in walnut uh, with the Fibings Pro Dye or Oil Dye. You can find both of them, and they're basically the same thing oil dye and pro dye, basically the same thing with different names. I'm not too sure why they changed that round, but there we go. I did wet my piece of leather first, and this is part of an ongoing experiment that I'm doing to see if the dye goes in better with a wet piece of leather. The, the theory behind that being that the water uh, will help draw in the pigments faster and you won't need in uh, as much dye uh, to get the same result. That is just a theory I'm testing though. If you've got any practical uh, vis vision about how that would work or experience in that, please share it with us in the comments below. I then like to go ahead and use one light coat of Fibings Neatsfoot oil. Now this could be any Neatsfoot oil of course, but I like Fibings, uh, I'm just used to it. And this will help nourish the leather as the, 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 the dyeing process will have dried it out a bit. This is Tokenol, and Tokenol is my new favorite magical thing. Uh, which is used mainly to do edge burnishing and it works incredibly well at that. However, this is a tip that I would share with any newcomer here. You can also spread it on the back side of a piece of leather and go ahead and give that a sort of a sort of burnish I'd say. Uh, the idea behind this being that it's a type of gum uh, that will help link all the fibers together and give you a much smoother finish on the back and the piece just looks and feels like it's a much more finished product. Uh, now the main benefit of this is to make sure that any small pieces or any small fibers of leather that may come loose will not come loose basically, uh, simple as that, and uh, it helps give the leather some a tiny bit more rigidity, though this isn't the main use for this kind of process. Now as this pattern is a bit flimsy uh, and not necessarily the easiest to trace around, especially that long uh, stitching edge on the top, I decided to go ahead and stick it to my piece of leather using some very simple uh, sticky tape. Now make sure that your tape won't leave any residues even though the pieces where the tape is in contact with the leather are also the pieces that you'll be cutting out so it shouldn't be a problem. Go ahead and punch through the different corners, this will make cutting much much easier as well as the holes for the slots. Now I've added in two markers here for your uh, metro and bus tickets but I'm only going to be using one side of this so I only went ahead and marked out that one slot on the left hand side. Here I am using a, a basically a small uh, awl or just something to mark out my corners on the top just in case my, sti my, my sticky tape moves around and I need to take it off to be able to do those final cuts, this will give me a reference for later. Now indeed in, in the event, uh, or at least in this uh, temp video basically, this did not happen to me so I didn't really need to do that, but go ahead and mark it anyway just as a step of precaution in case your tape come loose and you need some kind of point of reference to cut to. Once this is all done, go ahead and cut to the different corners at this point, as you can see. Uh, since I've got those first lines cut in, I can take off my uh, template and go ahead and cut the rest just freely by hand. Go ahead and cut the slots for your cards. Now be very careful not to slip on the ends there, because I did on mine, uh, on the metro slot or the, the bus ticket slot, and uh, although you can see it, it doesn't change anything structurally, but I would just recommend extra caution around those edges. 
I'm using a very small edge beveler here to be able to round out those edges and this will make it easier for me to go ahead and use uh, Turconol in order to burnish those edges. Now I had forgotten to do the back side as well, which yes, it's important to do all sides if you really want to make it very nice, at least as nice as possible. You'll notice at this point that I did not dye those edges. Now this is a personal choice for this project. I would normally recommend dyeing and I do recommend to you guys to dye the edges to get a more uniform look. But on this specific project, I wanted a contrasty edge to go with a contrasty thread. Uh, you'll be seeing that later. And I decided not to dye it. Now, in retrospect, for future builds, I probably will be dyeing it. Um, but in this video, again, this was a choice I made. And uh, yeah, I'm going to stick with it. I am using a fabric here that I got off a promotional tote bag that a company sent or gave to me uh, when I bought one of their products and I really like this fabric so I can't recommend any specific fabric just find something that you like uh, as far as I can understand this process will work with most fabrics as long as you're careful to apply the glue properly uh, depending on the type of fabric you may want to do test cuts first um, actually test cuts are always recommended so don't hesitate to go and do a test anyway of uh, sticking your fabric to the piece. You'll notice that the back panel is slightly bigger and that is normal. This is to accommodate the three millimeters or so of stitching all around the sides. I'm using some very basic cement glue here, or basic, I don't know, but it's, it's basic enough for me. What I mean by that is that you can use any type of glue that you're used to using. I do recommend cement glue as it works for any fabric uh, and will work very well. Just make sure you get it on both sides to be stuck together and let it dry for a couple of minutes, depending on how long they recommend on the, the pack of your glue, the pot, before sticking it together and uh, pushing out any air bubbles that may be there. At this step, make sure you add in all the glue you will be needing, including on the, the inside piece all around those edges that will be stuck together, as you saw me do a minute ago. I'm just clearing up the edges here of all the little bits of uh, thread that have gone all over the place, and I'll be sticking on my inside pocket area or pocket piece to the outside pocket piece or the outside piece. As I mentioned, make sure you get everything nice and straight, stick it down very firmly, Take your time to do this because once it's done, it will be a pain to undo if you need to. Uh, this glue is uh, quite forgiving. You can take your time, but once it's stuck down, it's going to be incredibly hard to take off. So make sure you get it right as fast as possible. Not necessarily as fast as possible, but at least on the first try. Give it at least a couple of hours to dry. If possible, at least a day would be great. I like to leave my things overnight before coming back to sand it. This will give the glue plenty of time to adhere and solidify and uh, will enable you to sand much, much better without having any issues where the leather is detaching or the threads are coming or the, the, the fibers are coming loose. So if you can, leave it overnight, leave it a day or at least a couple of hours before you go ahead and continue the process. Using the same edge beveler, I come in and get rid of those really harsh edges that have been created by sanding and again will help me round out those edges and get them prepared for the burnishing process. As I mentioned previously, I'm going for a raw edge here, not going to be dyeing them, but uh, for your choices, you may want to take a minute here to dye those edges before burnishing going back to using some tokenol. Now tokenol is a very specific product and you can use quite a few different methods here for burnishing. Uh, you know, the, you might see on forums the old-fashioned spit and water burnish which uh, I'm sure works fine but I do prefer the traditional uh, either tokenol or gum trag or tragacant or there are a few different things or methods you can try out there. Uh, again, this is a question of find the one that works best for you. Uh, but if you can get your hands on some tokenol, I would definitely recommend it because it has got quite a few different interesting uses that you could use it for and burnishing is one of them and uh, I used to be a gum trag guy for a long long time but when I discovered tokenol uh, it just changed my mind so completely completely changed my mind from gum trag to tokenol and now I cannot go back it just didn't, I just can't go back the stitching lines are recommended on the template, are marked down, but if you're going to be doing your own, feel free, just make sure uh, to give yourself enough space on the leather piece to be able to stitch properly. I recommend a 3mm spacer uh, to draw your line all the way down, and this will enable you to go ahead and start stitching. You don't need to be using a stitching uh, 
awl, well you can use an awl or a stitching uh, fork or irons like I'm doing here. Uh, for reference I'm using Crimson Irons 4mm uh, irons and I absolutely love them, they give me a great stitch but you could use the basic ones from Amazon or you could use an awl or you could use a machine to stitch as well. If you have a powerful machine you can use, go ahead and do that. I am using linen thread, waxed linen thread, but I still do like to wax it again just in case. Um, just it, For me it does several things. First of all, I know it will make my stitching easier because it, it rigidifies, uh, rigidifies, rigidifies the, the thread just a bit and enables me to have an easier time stitching. It's easier to manipulate, it's easier to use, um, so I like to do that. Secondly, it will also help protect the thread just a bit more uh, from wear and tear over the years. So it's never a bad idea to give your thread a few passes through a block of beeswax in order to help with that process and make it last longer. I'm using the tried and well, the, the old-fashioned method of saddle stitching which I still think is the best if possible um, but up to you to stitch however you want. If you want to use a, a simple lock stitch or if you want to just machine stitch it that's fine. If you're new to this channel, if you're new to Leathercraft, make sure you go and check out uh, some of the amazing YouTube tutorials on how to saddle stitch. There are some really great tutorials out there that will teach you how to do this properly. Uh, it does take a bit of time and practice, but the, the end result is just unparalleled in my opinion if you can do it properly. Now this is a small trick I found watching other guys on YouTube here, uh, is to add a tiny bit of glue to that last final double stitch and this will help really make sure that that thread is going absolutely nowhere. Now I've never had issues with a double stitch coming up, coming out, but just in case I decided to try myself uh, this technique of adding a bit of, uh, bit of glue to that stitch. And final uh, step of this whole build process is possibly the most rewarding, it's to apply your wax. I am using Saphir Pat d'Or or Médaille d'Or and uh, for me it's, it's just the best, the best there. It does cost a bit more than other waxes but uh, by golly I love it. It's, it's just gorgeous finish, really easy to put on, let it dry a few minutes, come up, come back and buff it. Uh, you might want to do that once, twice or even three times if you're feeling adventurous but I find that you doing it just twice is absolutely fine and sufficient for me. And once you've done this, well guess what guys, you have finished and you can enjoy your new wallet. And uh, yeah, guess what guys, let's have a look at the final result. Here you go, so this is the same wallet you've seen but uh, after two months of use I took it with me on holiday just to test out the pattern, test out the feel and see if I was happy with it before uh, showing this video to you guys and uh, it has creased a bit in the middle but that's totally normal and you can't see it once it's closed. You can see some of those uh, marks from the cut which I mentioned previously on the, the metro ticket slot but overall looking really really great after two months of daily daily use. Um, I've had it in my pocket, it takes easily up to 8 cards, if not 10 or even 12, although I wouldn't necessarily recommend having that many cards around all the time, but it's a really good little wallet, very very simple use, very simple build, it's a fun little thing to have on you, it takes nearly no space in your pocket, and uh, because of the amount of leather that's used, it's actually quite thin for the amount of use that you get out of it. So I've really been enjoying this, and I was debating whether to make it larger, wider, bigger, but ultimately, really pleased with this and I do hope you go and pick it up in the comments below, in the description below. So there, as I said, the pattern is in the description below and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you next time for some more Leathercraft.